Hello Comrades, you watching Red Ivan Airsoft and some of you asked me to make some videos specifically about Russian firearms. So today we will start a small cycle of videos about Russian firearms with this RPK or Ruchnoy Pulimiot Kalashnikova or in English Kalashnikov handheld machine gun. We will discuss the history of this gun, uh, the different uh, versions of this gun. Uh, also, we will talk about countries that produce them or use them. And finally, we will get to this LCT RPK 74M, which I purchased for myself. And we will talk about the advantages and disadvantages of this particular gun. So, stay with me. So, the first RPK uh, chambered with 7.62 mm cartridge was adopted by Soviet militaries in 1961. The idea was simple, they needed something cheaper than RPD, but as reliable as AK. So basically they just crafted the extended AK with heavier barrel and BPO and start produce them. RPK has two types of magazine, the uh, 75 rounds drum magazine and so uh, 40 rounds standard magazine which looks like a regular AKM magazine but uh, a little bit longer because it has 10 more rounds. Also there were several versions of RPKs, regular RPK, the standard one, RPKN which has uh, the dovetail mount plate uh, to mount some night vision scopes and optical scopes. The RPK-S, uh, the same as standard version but with uh, folding stock. RPK-SN, which uh, has both the dovetail mount plate and folding stock. RPK-L, which is pretty much the same as uh, RPK-N, but with a special flash hider, because some of the Soviet night vision scopes was pretty sensitive to the muzzle flash. And RPK-S-L, which is... Next generation of RPK was RPK-74, and the main difference between RPK and RPK-74 was that RPK-74 was chambered with 5.45 mm round because it was adopted with AK-74. Also RPK-74 and regular RPK have some more smaller differences. They have different shape of glass block, they have... Uh, different type of magazines of course the uh, RPK 74 magazine was looking like RPK magazine uh, but extended to have 45 rounds and uh, since the 5.45 millimeter round Russians stopped produce uh, the drum magazine for RPK so technically the only RPK with a drum mark could be found in the real life is regular 7.62 mm round RPK and so nowadays with the new RPK-16 they starting to develop some new drum magazines but uh, we are not gonna talk about this right now they just appearing and it's not something popular all over the world yet Another difference between RPK and RPK-74 was that RPK-74 has a flash hider. Regular RPK didn't have. Uh, and the main difference between them is the different b -port. The thing is that uh, this part I need to show you guys. Let's pretend that it's regular RPK. The thing is that in the real life you should be able to put your RPK on the ground or on the floor, no matter, and it should stay on its B ports and the stock. But since RPK has a long magazine, it's impossible to do so with it. So the RPK B ports 
their piggy barrel, I mean, should uh, spin around itself on the B pot. That's why we have this hole here. And so they just twist a little bit. Should be something close to that, but the B pot should be on the same place. And then you can put your RPK on the ground properly. With RPK 74, since it had different type of magazine, even more straight comparing to the RPK magazine. Oops. The B pot, uh, the barrel, I mean, should be twisted even more. So that's why, if you see on this picture, the, the small hole in the B pot mount is even bigger or RPK 74 and RPK 74M. Should be stable for now. Okay, and of course RPK 74 has all these variants that we discussed before, like RPK S 74, RPK N 74, RPK and S74, etc. In 1992, Russians finally realized that they have too much slightly different RPK versions, like RPK S, RPK N, and they decided finally to combine all these features in one machine gun. And that's how RPK 74M appeared. RPK 74M had a uh, the dovetailed plate, which was a uh, little bit different from the previous versions of it, uh, it has a folding stock. And the folding stock mechanism, by the way, uh, was a little bit different from what you can find on RPK-S and RPK-74-S. Because in RPK-S and RPK-74-S, uh, they had a different type of lock over here and to fold the stock uh, you'll need to put the bullet or cleaning rod in it to push the special lock in this hole to release the stock and then fold it here. RPK 74M could uh, work the same way that this LCT version works so you basically just uh, pull the locking mechanism and it's also released the stock uh, folding mechanism and then you simply fold it. Another feature was that uh, the barrel had uh, extended uh, life if I can say like that uh, and uh, it could fire a little bit more rounds and that's pretty much it. And now let's briefly discuss the users of different types of RPK. By the way, I forget to mention that also there was an RPK 74 later version which uh, featured the uh, plum uh, color, plastic handguard and non-foldable plastic stock which is pretty close internally to the RPK-74M, but uh, that version was produced during Soviet times and you may see some of them in Ukraine, Belarus and other post-Soviet countries. Okay, so RPK you may see in all post-Soviet countries and also it's been produced in some uh, Warsaw Pact uh, countries such as uh, Romania, but with different type of folding stock and uh, Germany with uh, non-folding stock. Uh, if we move to RPK-74, you may see uh, the later and older versions of it in all post-Soviet countries such as Ukraine, Belarus, Kazakhstan, etc. But if you're talking about RPK-74M, uh, right now they use it only in Russia. Also they have RPK-203 and RPK-204 I think, uh, which is the versions of RPK-74M with 7.62mm uh, round and 5.56mm round for export. And uh, 
Technically, officially, the regular standard older version of RPK uh, it's not in use in Russian uh, armed forces since the Second Chechen War and right now you will not be able officially to see it in army but if you look at some Syria pictures you will see that some Russian people probably find it on some wedding houses and using it successfully. Okay, now let's talk about uh, RBK 74M made by LCT. I love all LCT AK replicas, but unfortunately I have few complaints to their RPKs. First of all, the gearbox of this gun is perfect. It has all the top parts in it and you don't need to upgrade most of them. Like, I mean, basically change the spring if you need to make it a little bit more powerful. But the wiring it still sucks. If somebody watching this video knows some people from LCT, let them know that the wiring sucks. Okay, next complaint is that uh, the magazine Unfortunately, the guys from LCT, they don't produce the long uh, RPK or RP RPK-74 magazine, so we still have this like standard magazine, and it's not really cool. But it, it's okay, you can buy SEMA one or something other. Uh, next step is uh, gas block. As I mentioned before, the RPK and RPK-74, and of course RPK-74M, has different gas blocks. And on this machine gun, as you may see, they have a regular RPK gas block. We shouldn't be like that. Next thing is cleaning rod. All RPKs made by LCT comes with standard AK cleaning rod, which usually holds in this position. So I put some insulating tape on mine to prevent it from falling down. And it looks at least some kind of normal. Next, one of the biggest disadvantages I have is that uh, the B pods is the regular RPK B pods. Remember, I mentioned that, like, I'll put this picture again here so you can compare. The RPK 74 has uh, B pods mount with uh, a wider space in it in regards to make it twist a little bit more. To have different angles because the RPK 74 long magazine is even longer, I mean, it's look longer than regular standard RPK magazine. And even if you forget about this part, even this regular RPK before they almost freeze, they don't really move around, they should freeze, but they almost don't twist, so I will need to use some Dremel here to make them twist on bigger angle. And also, other disadvantages, and for me it's kind of like the most important, is that I understand that Airsoft RPK has a gearbox, so you don't really have a lot of space to make the lock inside, but uh, the thing is that this lock we should hold all the stock in folding position and stock by the way have the sling mount attachment so basically when you're carrying this uh, gun in the folding position by the way to release the stock you need to push the button inside and just pull it so this lock is too small i believe that like in two months or something close to it, it will be broken and my stock will not be able to be holded in like folding folded position. So it's also kind of sucks and they need to find another way to do that. And the last thing is that uh, this lock, I'm not sure about all scope mounts, but these scopes don't let my mount to go there because of this small pin inside but I mean you can fix it other way you just basically put it from the other side so it's not that bad by the way if you're talking about the U-notch it's complained mostly to other RPKs made by LCT the thing is that 
all the U notches in RPKs should have the same shape as this one. Because on regular RPK made by LCT, they are using the regular AK U notch which is incorrect. All the RPK U notches should look like this. The only difference between generations is that the regular RPK should have this uh, U notch with no coloration. The RPK 74 should have the red coloration like this and RPK 74M should have white coloration. And that's the whole difference. Okay, and I mean, despite all that, the RPK uh, made by LCT is still the best RPK on the market. But this small disadvantage, this small like incorrect things just make me a little bit unhappy. So maybe in few in further generations of this RPK they will change it. Okay. I guess now you know more about different types of RPKs. Soon I'm gonna have some more videos about Russian weaponry on this channel. Put like, subscribe to my channel and see you soon.